So, hi everyone. Um, this talk, um, this talk is about um, um, improving um, um, data quality um, with um, with deep learning, and the purpose is to um, uh, to detect uh, inconsistency between two kind of data set: the aerial one, uh, like a satellite imagery, for example, uh, and a vector, of, for instance, buildings or, or roads. Um, if we look uh, at the state of art to what we get to do that, um, right now we already have some open source tool to achieve it uh, in uh, OpenStreetMap ecosystem. Uh, the first one uh, is provided by a development seed uh, and they um, provide a tool to help uh, to, um, uh, to generate labels um, and then to, uh, to launch the training data, uh, data set uh, itself. Uh, they will present something uh, in this early conference the, um, today at the end of the day. So if you are interested in, uh, it could be uh, nice to see them. Um, the other tool who already exists um, and would just um, been uh, um, um, open source um, um, a few weeks ago uh, is Robosat uh, from NevTools, from my boxes. Um, and, um, the, the Robosat um, um, application uh, is based on the sleepy map tiles, uh, and uh, it's a lot of different um, um, small um, uh, small program. You can just um, call them. Uh, it's really really modular, in fact. Um, and uh, so the aim is to hide all um, the technical stuff on, on machine learning itself. So it provides a high level way to, um, to launch a training um, on a label and imagery. And um, it's really a state of art uh, on um, the algorithm in itself. Uh, and it's open source as a, it's an MIT um, open source solution. So um, the basic on this, it's a unit um, um, combination stuff. So uh, the point is uh, to, uh, to classify uh, like um, uh, they already present uh, in the Telenav um, um, presentation. But then uh, once you perform the classification, you will then um, segmentize the each pixel to get um, a class on it. So from um, an image, you got the same resolution, but with a classification. Um, there is also um, several steps to, to perform it. The first one is to uh, grab imagery and uh, feature a geogeson and to rasterize uh, your geogeson to, to, um, to get the labels. Once you've done that, you have to subset it with a train and validation uh, label and images. Then you can um, compute some um, uh, specific um, hyperparameter um, on, your, um, on your data set to improve um, the, training, uh, the training part and launch, launch the training itself. So here in the pink, it's the um, uh, Robosat um, uh, tools. Uh, and here in gray, it's the sleepy map tiles directory. Um, and there, you get the model. And once you train that, your model is uh, there, uh, ready to perform prediction on it. So to perform prediction, you've got another kind of imagery, and you will predict with your model, get probabilities, and then max them to get mass prediction. So the, um, the process is from image and feature, you create a data set, you train it, you get a model, and once you get your model, you can predict with your model and with other image. OK? And once you are able to, um, to use your other image, you can predict masks. 
Um, I launched um, uh, this one on um, um, a Belgium dataset uh, with a building feature. Uh, it's um, also um, aerial imagery um, on the zoom level um, um, 18. Um, and uh, with only a little data set, with only a few tiles, uh, the result at the end is already quite decent, even if it could be uh, improved. Um, and uh, uh, on the kind of uh, our results, um, from um, an AL imagery, you can uh, grab the probabilities and the mask uh, related to, to that. Obviously, it doesn't work uh, in all cases, and in some cases, it do uh, something um, with less accuracy. And for instance, uh, if my data set is not uh, well designed, at the end, uh, uh, the result is uh, less accurate because there I wanted to um, to grab buildings and not roads. Um, so um, the the indicator uh, to um, um, to to perform uh, the training is based on uh, a metric called intersection over union, and this intersection over union give you. Um, a similarity between two images um, as metrics, uh, and this um, um, this metric will help on each um, each uh, step to improve your model. And what we do then is to once we um, create the product mask to um, to grab um, some um, uh, some feature from OpenStreetMap to rasterize it, and to check what is the distance between a new mask and the one we just predict. And if we do that, uh, you can check that uh, if um, there is an aerial imagery, there is. Um, a mask related to him, but there is nothing uh, on um, on OSM. Um, the intersection of the union will be quite quite low. If it's a tile with nothing related in, uh, it will be a low something low. But uh, if it's something far more related, it will be uh, it will be improved. So it could be a way uh, at this point to to say okay. Um, um, we can uh, we can have a, um, um, a quick way uh, to get an indicator of quality. Uh, is it that simple? In fact, not at all, uh, because uh, on this one you don't at all um, train a model to segmentize between um, um, between buildings on uh, an aerial imagery. You only do that for a specific resolution at a specific zoom level. Uh, with um, um, some kind of landscape, here is Belgium, and so on and so on. So it's not generalized enough to be uh, usable at scale. It will only work with this uh, really kind of the same imagery uh, in input. So the question now is, what kind of data set do we have now uh, to, to perform this kind of training? One uh, is called SpaceNet. Uh, and SpaceNet uh, coverage is quite huge um, compared to, to the one I just used before, and is multispectral, but is only uh, focused on cities. So there is nothing about um, countryside and so on. Uh, but for big cities, um, yeah, it's the it's one. But uh, the license uh, is not that permissive um, because, for instance, you can do any, anything you want with, um, with the data um, you, you train you train on. Um, another data set is uh, in RIA 1. Um, is only focused on, lab, on, on buildings. Uh, there is several kinds of cities, from a small one to big ones, but uh, there is nothing about the countryside. Um, it should be on public domain. Um, but there is nothing um, w explicitly said that, so it has to be checked. Um, and uh, uh, the other one, um, the one I used, um, is um, 
um, is, uh, is based on the Belgium um, uh, landscape. So uh, there is um, um, countryside um, um, area uh, covered, and uh, it covered roads, buildings, and water surfaces uh, on the labeled part. But on the license, it's a research project only, so you cannot choose uh, to do uh, anything you want. Um, so, the, so the point here is to say, what can we do uh, about uh, open data set? If we look back um, on, the, on the past, all the, the progress we have been done in um, um, machine learning based on vision, uh, our, um, the begin is an ImageNet collection. It's a collection uh, about um, one, um, one million of images. And uh, this uh, collection of images was um, the way to uh, improve uh, the contest each year and to increase the accuracy uh, and the way to, um, um, to perform classification and segmentation. But um, uh, it's not only um, a way to, um, um, to, to help uh, to save time to launch a computation. Um, the first one uh, is um, uh, it will help you to save time, but it will also um, um, be a way to compare the results. Because as since as you are able to compare your results with someone else because they are based on the same data set, uh, you are, um, you've got a way to, um, to check uh, if the kind of uh, treatment you, uh, you choose in your training was the one or not. Um, so um, at the moment, um, as since as there is an open data set um, available, um, became uh, a point where you, you've got uh, already trained model. So at a point, uh, we, can, uh, um, uh, we can bet that there will be a trained model on OpenStreetMap data set who could came as since as you've got a decent um, open data set uh, to perform that. But as since you, you don't have uh, um, a good training data set, you cannot uh, wait for um, a brain, um, uh, brain model on it. And the next step is um, an out of the box application. So what could be an ideal um, open data set? Uh, you have to be uh, open data license compliant, uh, world landscape representative, with mixed resolution and mixed sensor, uh, RGB, but not only, um, and coverage masks. So it implies, for example, on roads, uh, that roads are not um, encoded as a line string, but as an area. So, so um, from, from open source map, it could, be, it could change, because as since as you are focused on a matrix uh, IRL imagery, um, your roads have to be um, uh, encoded as a surface. Um, a tall size has to be uh, big enough. Uh, and uh, it could be nice to, to, uh, to get the date of, of acquisition and the sensor type. So it's an ideal. But uh, it, it could give uh, some, yeah, some lead to, uh, to what could be. Um, there is uh, already um, an initiative to say, um, uh, OK, what could be a label training uh, on um, Sentinel-2? So this kind of uh, um, open data set on coverage for IRL imagery uh, already exists. Um, but um, the point here is to say, what can we do uh, more uh, to, um, to improve that? Um, if you want to play with, uh, there is a um, really nice um, uh, tutorial um, from one of the developers from Mapbox uh, who perform um, as a, um, a RoboSat um, program. So this one is, a, is really a, a way to, uh, to begin to, to play with. And this one are all the resources to, to play with. And if you want to contribute, um, um, the labeling um, itself uh, could be uh, really interesting uh, on SpaceNet, for instance, for instance, because it's the best available um, imagery uh, provided. But um, 
even if it's good for the buildings, it's really poor for the roads. So uh, if we want to, uh, uh, to have a semantic segmentation on roads, uh, a space net cloned on clean roads labeling uh, could be really nice. And uh, everything we can do on open real map labeling uh, will help too. Um, and the other thing uh, who could be uh, nice too uh, is um, uh, right now the RoboSat application is really brand new uh, and the post-processing uh, is something uh, we just uh, begin um, on this application. So everything could help to uh, post-process the feature uh, could be really nice to, to improve the process. Um, the, the goal um, at some point uh, is to, to see what um, Prior or Kaggle um, team already achieved before uh, from a satellite, a satellite imagery. They perform to, to get a really nice semantic segmentation, but to achieve that, uh, they have to pre-process the imagery. Uh, they have to uh, use really um, high resolution imagery and then to post-process them. So uh, if we want to, to get that uh, at scale and um, openly uh, available, um, right now we already uh, uh, have the, the tool and thanks to Mapbox, but um, we don't have uh, either the, the data set or either the post-processing um, um, part. Um, what will be the next uh, descriptive uh, point? Uh, it will be to have a lower resolution imagery sem semantic segmentation, uh, for example, on Sentinel-2 or Planet Lab, or to, to achieve that with, multi uh, with different kind of sensor, not only AL imagery, but for instance, AL imagery and GPS track, for example. Um, as a conclusion, tools are nowadays available, uh, but the current bottleneck is an open data set. And uh, um, tomorrow, um, I launch on the room S1.6 um, on Sunday at the beginning of the afternoon, uh, above, to just talk about what can we do about uh, open data set. Is it something we can, um, we can contribute together or not uh, to, uh, to help to improve this kind uh, of thing and so to help the whole process of machine learning based on higher imagery. And thanks. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. And I have two questions. Uh, so the first question is uh, whether you have tried to predict multiple categories of objects together. Like uh, within one you know, uh, image tile, you may see houses, both houses and uh, roads and you know, forests or lakes together. Yeah. So I wonder if you have tried to predict the margin of multiple categories of objects together. together. Um, or do you only focus on um, either you know buildings or okay. roads at one time? At, at this at this moment, uh, I focus only on buildings because it's uh, more easy to tackle because of the labels. Because of the labels, uh, buildings are easier to uh, to mm -hmm. to get. Uh, roads, for example, uh, are harder because uh, most of the labels are based on line string. So as soon as your label uh, is uh, as a line string, it's hard uh, to, to get a, a good, um, uh, good results at the end. Uh, and the other point is uh, right now RoboSat, uh, I just used for, uh, is only um, um, able to perform one classification at a time. So okay. if you want to have a, a multiple segmentation yeah. uh, with several classes, you have to uh, improve it or to do uh, several times and to try uh, to, um, to remove all the intersection between your classification. Sounds good. And the second question is about uh, the misalignment between OpenStreetMap data and the satellite imagery. So it happens quite often, right? So I wonder, like when you do the cross-validation step, well, uh, if you have considered this problem as a challenge or 
have tried to tackle it. Um, could you re repeat to your, your question? Yeah, so the question is uh, yeah. about the misalignment between op OpenStreetMap data yeah. and satellite imagery. Yeah. I wonder when you do the cross-validation step, if you have tried to you know, tackle this challenge. <coughs> I'm not like, sure to understand you. Like for the for the shape of the building on the OpenStreetMap data, right? There, it might has an offset compared with the satellite imagery. You might observe an offset between the uh, the building in OpenStreetMap and the satellite imagery, right? Sorry, okay, I, I guess I can just follow up with the details. It's a little bit hard to describe your problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, in, so okay. So in fact, uh, we don't um, um, we don't work um, on um, uh, OSM in itself. Uh, we work on the label, uh, and so the, the the next step is to compare uh, the label uh, and uh, the OSM um, vector uh, in itself. So you you don't compare, um, in fact, the satellite imagery with the OSM. You compare, in fact the label from your data set with the label from uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so it's here, the comparison is um, the OSM rasterization between your masks who come from the prediction. So in fact, you never compare uh, the, the ARL and uh, the OSM, but you compare here um, two, uh, two vector rasterization and be, um, between. Uh, I have a, a bit technical question. Uh, how much do you think that uh, multispectral imagery helps in addition to like normal imagery? For example, for our country, we have 10 centimeter open data for satellite mm. just uh, this month's uh, released, but they only have the visible parts, the obvious one. Should we have also uh, this multispectral? Um, yeah, for example, they, they achieve a really good result because um, um, they, they've got high resolution and multispectral, but they achieve it on a really small data set. And the point is, more you got data, less you need uh, multispectral. But uh, on the other way, um, if you got a multispectral, uh, you got uh, additional information, uh, and so it really could help, uh, especially uh, if the resolution you use, uh, for example, with Sentinel-2, uh, is lower. So it could be a balance between the resolution you get and the number of bands you've got. And, uh, and if you are able uh, to, uh, to compare between um, a multispectral with a high resolution and with a uh, um, sorry, with a low resolution, uh, at a point you're able, even with a low resolution aerial imagery, uh, to 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 bet to go to get um, a decent result at the end. Okay. So second question is: yeah. uh, How different uh, do you think that the models will be depend the source data? For example, if I have different uh, origins. Can I reuse the same model for, um, uh, my, I don't know, Planet Lab data from uh, Sentinel? Um, it would just work. Um, it, it would, it, um, the result will be poor if you use it just like it. You have to um, train it again uh, to, to, uh, to get a decent result. And um, the, um, the imagery has to be. Um, um, somehow comparable uh, on, um, on the color um, um, ratio. For example, in planets, it's a huge problem um, for them to calibrate uh, the whole data and to have something um, current enough uh, to perform any kind of treatment. So it will be something r really uh, touchy uh, to go to one single uh, data set uh, with enough information to allow, at a point, uh, some kind of a generic um, um, system um, to, to perform with any kind of sensor 
a quite decent um, uh, result, but uh, you can use fine training. So you, um, you begin to train it on the generic data set, and at the end, you, you finalize it on your specific data set. Uh, and on this way, it could be a good way to, to achieve that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot.